We have a very special guest joining us for the podcast today. We have our very own video editor. How you doing, Sam? What's up, boys? It's good to be on the podcast finally. I've been poking Hamza for a few months now. Like, get me on the fucking podcast. Get me on the podcast. I just swore so this videos are already monetized. My bad. I was getting you on the podcast. You just flaked on me last time, man. So That's true. back on Cinder. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we organized a date for the podcast and I uh I just completely fucking forgot. So my bad, Hamza. So we're here now though. What's up, guys? Show Very good to be here. We appreciate you dressing what? up, man. He's wearing yeah, a like full you. collared shirt and everything. That's his date yeah, shirt. <laughs> Stay classy. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna jump right in. <clears throat> What's it like working for Hamza? Terrible. Why? He keeps me in a cage. He he keeps me in a cage in his gym. He uh, he just sweats all over me. Works out three times a day. Uh, <laughs> he makes me <laughs> he makes me edit uh, shirtless videos of him all the time. I've basically been uh, groomed, to be honest. No, I'm only kidding. Um, working with Hamza boys is uh, phenomenal, right? Because if you think about it. You guys, to get the value from Hamza's videos, you have to actually commit some of your free time to watching the videos, right? Me, watching the videos is my fucking job. It's my job. I get paid to watch the videos. So it's actually fucking fantastic. And Hamza's always been um, really... What's the word I'm looking for here? Any sort of negotiation, it's it's piss easy because I feel like Hamza understands like the value that I give to him. Uh, so I don't need to like fucking, I need to put on my fisty cuffs and start fighting, you know. Um, very, very good to work with Hamza, and his he was sort of like my first like client too. So the fact that we're still like going, um, what was it? We we started working together like November, right? Um, well, late December, November. Uh, was it the diet video? Was the first one? Yeah, it was about the sugar, and I, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first video I edited for Hamza was a uh, was a video about how the sugar industry is lying to you and stuff like that. And when I was watching this, obviously I was I was uh, really unaware of all this stuff and. I was just like, wait, this guy's fucking batshit insane. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this guy is fucking nuts. But uh, it didn't take long for me to sort of realize like exactly how right he is. Cause since I started to do fitness stuff myself as well, I started looking into this stuff myself. And um, yeah, it's just been fucking great working with, with you since Hamza, you know, and we got big things coming too. We, 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 we talk about a lot of uh, stuff, you know, all the time, how to improve. It's good. It's fantastic. It, it, and it's, it's really nice having like a good fucking friend as well. Hamza's a great fucking friend to me. Great friend. And he's also, you know, sort of uh, my boss in some sense too, which is, which is great. Thank you. So it doesn't really feel like that. I'd say we have like a very, very pleasant working relationship where it doesn't even feel like, you're working for me. Like the first question I asked you was, what's it like working for Hamza in my mind? I went like, oh, that was the wrong word. It's working with Hamza. It's like the videos are literally like 50-50. Like my videos were just trash before you. I was literally just doing like the basic trim and cuts and maybe just a picture over the, over the, the like talking head video that I have. And <laughs> yeah, I've, I've dribbled all that. I look like a retard, man. <laughs> Drop your tea over. <laughs> I just sit down a little bit more. <laughs> That's why I'm like all the way yeah. down here. <laughs> <laughs> nice body language, man. It's because I'm here. It's okay, guys. I'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's going to run the videos now. I'm just going to edit again. <laughs> yeah, it's been like, it's, it's one of the things that I've, I've taught. I can't even take myself seriously with a, a stain on my t-shirt. <laughs> just, take, just take it off, Hamza. It's fine. So no one will be but first if you take your shirt off, you know. See, this is like one of the extra benefits of working with Sam. He's just very, very homo, homo neurotic. Like he was with <laughs> those videos, but he likes them. And he always encourages me to send more of them. 
even like if we're not I even don't. Funny, like hey Hamza have you got any more of the ab videos I'm like yeah yeah uh, oh, Hamza I need ready. that for a thumbnail bro can you send me a picture of your asshole for the thumbnail mate <laughs> He's like, he's not even editing a video right now. And he's like, have you got one of those shirtless videos? I'm <laughs> I remember actually, you just reminded me pretty early on when we were working together, like we weren't really like friends, but like I was sort of like, I was still like sort of bantering or whatever. I was just being me. And uh, you, you called me a uh, fruity person. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like half of me was like, oh, damn, I don't think he likes me being a bit gay. But then the other part of me were like, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, How did you think, you know, when I first contacted you? So I saw Sam's advertisement on Fiverr, which is like a freelance website. So I had my coaching on there. We could just book calls with me. Some guys have got like design or whatever. So Sam had like just a video editor, one for YouTube. So I contacted him and I'm, I sent you like the the detailed instructions, didn't I? Yeah, you, you did. were the you were the guy who said like, oh, the the instructions are like very very clear. I'll be able to do this exactly how you want. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this motherfucker impression. This motherfucker hires a video editor and then tells the video editor exactly in a Google <laughs> Doc a whole page is like I want this 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 and I'm like fuck me okay well honestly it was really nice because obviously I had anxiety. So, and I was unsure of myself. Again, he was my first fucking client. I was unsure of myself. So the fact that he came in with like his doc telling me exactly what he wants. Easy, easy money, you know? <laughs> um, we have a really nice like flow as well with our work. Like we established like this, this just piss easy system where to be honest, we don't really need to fucking talk to each other. We can just do the fucking shit and then, well, we still talk though because it's, you know, it's fun, but it's great. All of it's great. Hamza, I have a question. Yeah. When you were looking for a, (laughs) yeah, that's, that's the thing with, with you on your podcast, you seem to sort of interview people. I'd I'd like if you, uh, if the other person asks Mm. questions too, because you're a fucking interesting guy. So, (laughs) um, I have a question, man. So. When you were looking for a video editor on Fiverr, what exactly were you looking for in all honesty? So I had a couple of guys before you, and I went with the route that I learned in the book. I you the four. Before, fuck off. The four hour <laughs> where he was like, oh, you know, you can get, get the, you can outsource your work nice and cheap. And so specifically at first, I was looking for brown guys. And I was like, oh yeah, finally, like, I was, I was liking it as well. I'd book on it and be like, okay, sir, sir, no worries, sir. Like, please, like, Mr. <laughs> like, call me and all the nice stuff. And honestly, their, their production quality just wasn't that great. And I was just thinking like, uh, I can do it myself better. And I'm paying them more than what would be minimum wage in this country, which is like probably double or triple what they essentially, not kind of horrible way, but like should be making for their service in that country. And so I didn't think like the value was there. And so I started thinking, shit, let me just specifically search for a guy who's, who's British. And I started looking just, there was a couple of like dweebs that I messaged as well. And I think your one in particular, it was so clear that you actually were the type of guy who would know the vibe that I was going with. And that's what someone's even saying before. We don't even have to speak to each other, honestly. The first time, like I sent the instructions, I wrote up detailed instructions because I was used to working with editors from like Pakistan or India or anything. With Sam, it was like, I didn't even need to. I sent it over to him and after one or two times, it was just kind of like, I'd just send him the video and he'd put in the memes and everything. I didn't even need to think about it. And, and I'm pretty sure there's, there's been like what, one or two times where I've said like, oh, can you take that bit out of the video? That's it. But every other time, if you see something creative in the video, it's literally just Sam. Like I'm not the creative guy. I literally just record the video of me just speaking like a spurg. And you guys are actually seeing like, like props to this guy. He's, he sits through the raw unedited versions. You guys don't even know what it's like. Like this guy, he's been through some stuff. You should, if we zoom into Sam's face, it's like that Vietnam flashback. <laughs> he's, he's trying to edit me. And I've repeated the line like literally six or seven times. And I finally start saying it right. And he's like, okay, okay, so finally, it's taking like a minute to get to this bit. He's like, okay, fine. Okay, we're going to move on. And I mess up the line on the last sentence. I'm like, I'll repeat it again and again. <laughs> I used to edit my own videos and I know you would think that this was the time that I said it right 
And then yeah, it'd be like another two times after that that you just have to like, how long does this motherfucker just spend just on these errors? <laughs> <laughs> There's times where... There's times where... Hamza finishes a sentence perfectly, but then right at the end of the sentence, he goes, oh, wait, no. So it's like, oh, sorry, so this is what you got to do. He goes, oh, wait, no. And then he's like, he thinks he's fucked up, and then he just does the exact same sentence again. <laughs> and it's like, what, what the fuck's the point, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it is what it is. I, I can, uh, guys, I make Hamza look uh, very fucking smart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, to be fair, that's sort of what happens when you, because Hamza, you don't, you don't like fully script your videos yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, sneak little. Leak of the, the, <laughs> what would you call that? A What's preview. That Spoiler. There's an Easter egg. Dude. It's like nerd. <laughs> There's like nerd talk in it, like <laughs> when like the movie's coming out and then all the nerds are like, oh, have, you, "Have you seen that? Uh, the, the video they said this, there was there was this thing in the video that <laughs> like, oh, I think the Marvel character." <laughs> you just stay after the credits, dude. Does <laughs> oh my god, what's gonna happen to the next one? <laughs> no, but you don't actually script your videos. You sort of just write like a, a an point. outline for the videos right so like yeah of course you're gonna sort of fuck up some lines you know it's not it's not a problem it's not a problem for a fucker like me you know <laughs> <laughs> sam let's talk about your self-improvement journey <laughs> oh god did you know about self-improvement before you started doing my videos absolutely not what was life like before <laughs> december oh man wow okay so in the past like year, boys, I have been literally like a fucking rocket ship like this. Obviously, I have my dips. I'm on a dip right now, if I'm honest. I'm, I'm having a bit of a rough one right now, but that's okay. Um, but in general, this, it's crazy. Um, before, I sort of understood um, a lot of the concepts which Ham Hamza talks about. I was literally... I, I hate to say it because like it, it makes me cringe because like I take the piss out of these people, but like I was probably a consumer man. I, I would just consume. I would just consume media. I would just sit, play game. I wouldn't buy shit to be honest. Like I'm really tired of my money, but like I would just play fucking games all day, not worry about fucking anything which actually matters. My life was like seventy percent my League of Legends rank. <laughs> Which is fucking insane, because, like, I wasn't building up any other areas of my life which actually mattered for the longest time. So I've, I've sort of, <clears throat> on the starting line of life, I am, like, you know, the, the pistol was shot. And then, like, 20 years later, I, I'm like, oh, it's time to go. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um... <laughs> But with that being said, I feel like I have a really fucking good grasp on a lot of the um, sort of talking points and points that, that Hamza makes in general uh, and just other people's points in general and stuff like that. I, I can understand this stuff like really easily because I've actually experienced the like bad side of those those things you know what i mean so while a lot of people sort of have a decent ish you know decent ish start to life and they're like you know they're comfortable so they're fine they don't need to look at you know um how to how to um <laughs> i don't know how to how to uh, talk to girls or whatever um it's kind of a shame because they're sort of plateaued already they're sort of comfortable with where they're at and it's like it's not like that it's just a really average below average at times sort of existence um i, found, I sound kind of like snobby right now it's i'm really not um but my point is a lot of people don't have the need to sort of look at themselves 
and think like, oh, where can I improve? Where can I be better? Um, and I think that's a shame. So I'm thankful that I do have that that mindset of um, what is it the word I'm looking for? It's like I'm I'm self reflection. I'm I'm reflecting a lot um, recently. You know, I have a lot of time to think about things. Mm. Well, that's gonna happen in it. It's, <clears throat> if you're getting closer to someone like me, and then you've you've played a very very important role. Like you are literally my right hand man. You you came as the video editor, and you've become the guy who's we can even say like on level with me. The the boys all know you. You're the admin in the discord you're the one who made the discord and everything you're the one who's like a discord mod things. stay away I boys <laughs> <laughs> god damn <laughs> <laughs> so and so since you've been surrounded by this community and especially because me and you actually speak pretty often especially recently you're getting hit with with constant introspectiveness because that's the type of guy i am and when you spend time with someone you just become more like them so you've become more like an introspective guy and I've become more like an autistic little pizza. <laughs> yeah. Actually you're gonna start just spurging out on RuneScape and I'm just gonna take over the channel. <laughs> that would be a workout montage of you. Bro, we record a montage of you working out and I just throw it into one of the videos. <laughs> That's actually a fucking great idea. Oh my god. I'm actually I'm gonna do rest that. Day. <laughs> I'm just rest day. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking do that. I'm gonna do like some really autistic looking exercises as well. <laughs> so would you say before you fully got into self improvement, it it was video games that was your kryptonite? You can tell by just looking at me, can't you? You can you can <laughs> tell that, that guy's that guy's a fucking gamer. That guy games. You know? And I've still not shocked that that image, you know? And um, I've, I've not been playing games for, uh, oh, what is it? Cause I told you like a spurg that I was going to stop games. Uh, even though don't talk about your plans, pussy, you know, but whatever. <laughs> um, it was like maybe two months ago, something like that. And like, you know, I have, I have since like played a few games, but it's, it's literally like, it's nothing like it was nothing. It's, it's a much healthier relationship um but i'm still i'm still that guy um it's gonna take a while to to sort of shape that but yeah definitely games and you were saying one time as well we were all speaking about having kids and and how we'd behave and how we'd teach them and you the first thing you said was you would not let them onto games because your parents didn't actually know the consequences of them so they thought it was you know it's okay if it's little, little sam to go play play his games and you realized after you've you've come into this community after you've talked about about self-improvement you've learned about incident delayed gratification you realize like the cost the hidden cost of these games which i mean you can tell the boys if there's any video gamers you can send your message out to them now <clears throat> yeah so I get the piss taken out of me as well by by people for saying that video games are poison. Uh, I I get I get sneak this sometimes, but it's it's absolutely fucking true. If you are um, <clears throat> if you're even slightly like weak minded or maybe even a little bit timid, maybe like I am, um, it will be so unbelievably natural and easy for you to slip into just living on video games especially when you're younger. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily say like to my, my son or daughter, like no video games, but I would definitely veer them towards a path of a more outgoing thing such as sports. Cause like if, if you, if you have actually more of an outgoing personality, if you veer them in that sense, they, then games won't be much of a problem. They'll just be like a bit of a, you know, a Spurg activity that they might do sometimes. But like for me, I didn't have anything like that. And I had a shit time at school. I had a really shit time at school. So my life became um, forced to go to school 
never wanted to go. And uh, the only thing I'd look forward to was going back and playing um, some fucking COD on my Xbox, you know. And um, it it can very quickly veer out of control. And I've always had like a, a fairly addictive personality style when it comes to games as well. The first time I got a console was a PlayStation 2. And I got Grand Theft Auto 3 on that. And I remember I used to like... My sister would go on it for I five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you already know. You already know. <laughs> but, no, HP just um, goes all the way back up. <laughs> um, my sister used to go on it for like five minutes, and I'd be like, "No, my turn out, my turn," and I'd I just fucking play it like so much. I've I've always had that addictive personality style. Um, They're terrible. Games are games are fucking terrible. They they steal they steal your future away from you if if you have that attitude towards them. The what the one that I did. And it's 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 actually fucking heartbreaking because just so much time. Like even just on my PC alone. Like I used to be like more of a console guy. In the past, like, you know, five years, I, I became a PC gun. On my PC alone, I probably have, like, 10,000 hours on games. And that's, like, that's not even, like, the worst of it. Like, some people have 10,000 hours on one game. And then, obviously, if you factor in, like, the stuff I did on consoles, which was, I was, I was more of a spurg on consoles. I, I just went home from school, immediately turned my Xbox on. That's what I lived for. Just so much time leveling up my skills inside of a game when I could have been <clears throat> doing it in real life. It's awful. It is awful. That's the sad trap. The, the reality of video games is you're just doing in something in a virtual world that you should be doing in real life. Like Sam said before, you could put that time into something like sport. And I wouldn't sport say you should be picking up game. prostitutes in real life. But. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, if you're down horrendous, I mean, go for it, I guess. But. Sports are games, man. Is it? What you'll realize if you have been a video game nerd is that video games work just like real life does, where you start off at level one, Everyone's making fun of you. You you just trash at whatever thing you're doing. And the one thing that video games does is that, or two things is, is one, it gives you a faster progression from level one to like level 20 compared to the, the same levels in real life. But two video games don't have much discomfort, Like the discomfort in video games is that you die and you have to wait 10 seconds to respawn. And that means that, the delayed gratification of leveling up in a video game isn't actually delayed. It's actually pretty instant. And that's why you get hit hooked onto them like crazy because you just constantly get that feeling of making progress in such a clear manner because you, you, you know, you're, you're being a nerd. You like, you set the goal and try and get 91 runecraft in and every single day you see, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm 36.3% away and I've got 300 K experience left f- for this hour. And so it's comfortable to level up. It's comfortable to spend 10 hours doing that. It's not comfortable to go out and play sports. It makes your life better and you'll be so glad that you did, but it's not comfortable. And so why would you go play sports? Why would young Sam go and play football out in the street when he can just come home and get even more fun playing COD and just dropping kids on that? Yeah. And I want to point out as well, it's pretty easy to point at like a parent and just be like, why did you allow this? But they didn't know. They didn't know. They did not fucking know. Like these, <clears throat> these <clears throat> fucking algorithms that are used to sort of manipulate. You know, like what Hamza was just saying in my mind, <clears throat> sorry, I was just thinking of the modern warfare Two level up sound and how much fucking serotonin that shit used to give me. And it's like, it's, it's brand new. Like your parents didn't fucking know about this, this fucking horrible trap. Um, and it's, it's, it's too easy to blame them. And it's, it's not, it's not their fucking fault. You know, um, 
especially with everything else which is going on in our lives, you know, it's hard. It's it's fucking horrendous. It really is. What do you um? I have a question for you, Hamza. Because we're talking about me, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna ask you something. <clears throat> so, you've mentioned a few times in your videos, like you know, around a year ago, you had this just switch flip. What were the main factors which caused that? Because like for a lot of guys watching or listening, right, they're gonna be thinking like, dude, you had it all. You had it all. You had your own apartment. You were shagging. Uh, you're in a, you've got the logistics lined up. You're in Manchester. There's lots of, you know, you got a nice body, you know, what went wrong? What could have possibly went wrong? You know? So like, tell me about it. Mental health. That's what mm. is. <clears throat> so one year ago was when the transformation fully started. That's when I moved back. So I moved back home to where I am now in May, 2020. So it's been like one year and two, three weeks now. But I wanted to make progress and I wanted to just do something with my life a whole year before that. Like I, I had, I was in the self-improvement struggle stage, the self-improvement depression stage for an entire year. That's why when I know about this shit, because I stayed like that for an entire year, I wanted to do stuff more than just going to the gym a couple days a week or just sleeping with my girlfriend. I wanted to like accomplish something. I wanted to grow a business. I wanted to be either like a YouTuber or a drop shipper or just something that... <clears throat> I could like live my dream of being like a digital nomad because I've always found that so cool. Like just go travel with your laptop. I graduate from uni. In fact, the story was that the last year of uni is when my mental health problems really came in. Anxiety got all time worse, smoking weed every day. At first the weed was very, very beneficial. It was the first time that I could physically feel the anxiety leaving my body. And so of course I started smoking every single day. Eventually, the, the negative thoughts, negative thoughts start coming in when I'm smoking. <clears throat> with some clarity now, I realize that they weren't exactly negative thoughts. They were just the thoughts of like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Like, why am I smoking again? Like, just go to the gym, just go and work. Like, you can't, why are you smoking? Like, you just said you wouldn't spend money on this shit. Now you're going to go eat. You've already hit your calories. What are you doing? Why are you eating that shit? Like, those snacks have been in that cupboard for three months. Why are you eating them now? And imagine that every single day. Imagine when you truly, truly, like, have a passion for fitness and your body transformation and you feel uncontrollable urges to eat all the junk food. And so my mental health went to shit. My body went to shit. Not relative, right? Because if I say this, everyone's like, wait, wait you, you still look good, but it's like, it's relative to me. And it, at that point I was more than five years into consistent training. So if I didn't look amazing, then something's definitely going wrong with how serious I was taking it before that. So we're in Thailand. we near the end of my uni period me and my girlfriend we go travel there mental health is still bad there not even enjoying myself just wanting to be by myself but also not be by myself and feeling lonely and negative thoughts and stress and anxiety and everything <clears throat> get the results the day we come back from thailand i get the results of uni and i was literally holding my fingers hoping that i had failed because if i failed it was going to be the transformation. It was going to be that I've got to repeat the year and I was going to move back into the student accommodation, which you boys have heard about, which I had like a very, very good time. And then I was just going to like, I was going to join American football again. I was going to like take it all serious, getting back into the social life and everything. And I passed. And I did, technically, I honestly, I didn't even pass. Like I got 35% and pass rates of 40 and they just gave me a compensated pass. So those motherfuckers just like let me win. But it was like a pointless win because at that, with that degree of like 40% a third honors, there's nothing. And so when I'm applying for jobs, there was just no job that wanted a third honors. And so, you know, I need money. I'm, I'm staying in, in Manchester. I wasn't getting along with my family. I moved back to my family home as well for like five days, like horrible time. We're all arguing. And so I moved, I moved back and like blocked everyone. So now I'm like, fully an adult by myself i don't have family anymore i've got my girlfriend who i didn't want to be with who wasn't even like i never even officially made her my girlfriend because i didn't even want to be with her so you could tell i was living like such an unideal life and to cope with it i was waking up and just smoking weed like immediately like i was still doing like 
5 a.m. wake ups and everything, you know, rising, rising grind. And sometimes at 5 a.m. pitch black, I'm running to the gym with fucking anxiety. Like 5 a.m. Manchester, running to the gym. Like, I, you know, I, I had the discipline and the willpower for this shit, but the environment truly took a hold of me. And so I'd just be smoking all day, every day and shit, just not leveling up in any way. And the only way that I felt comfortable there was when me and my ex would just be like totally high. And mental health got worse while it's not even growing or anything. I'm starting working full time, shitty job. The only jobs I was eligible for were literally the ones that I was also eligible for before going to uni four years ago, which is like very disappointing. And then I get in it. it there was nice people as well my co-workers they were honestly nice people but that was like a big thing for me to to be sat next to people who were nothing like me who were like very overweight very like the issue is they were truly nice to me and I don't want to like criticize them but it was not somewhere that I fit in like I was the disciplined guy I, I applied to join the military the, the air force I was gen, like genuinely going to apply and everything my, my application was getting fast tracked because I'm brown skin and they do you know what I mean? if you're brown you get into the military nice and easy and so here I am doing double workouts like I, I wake up at five get to my work building go to the gym there just, you know get ready and stuff go to work in my eat my lunch whilst on shift so I'd just bring sandwiches and when no one was looking I'd take like a bite out out of my pocket just so but as soon as lunchtime hit instead of having to sit next to everyone I'd go back to the gym double session come back home like proper discipline and everything and by the time I'd get home just before I'd enter the building it'd be pitch black and there was like a certain part of my walk which would be a couple of minutes long so I'd usually just cry there is that where like that bridge is you, you sent me a video before of like you were on like a, a bridge next like, to the it's like a small bridge and it had like a, a canal through it as well and you you got really upset in one of your videos because you were like yeah. this was a really yeah, yeah. nice spot but i was never mindful for it yeah so that that was like the smoke spot and it was that was pretty much like just past the bushes of where i'd walk home so imagine like the I'd come off from the tram. You can take like the proper road to get to the building, but that takes a while. So you just kind of shut cross down into like this bit, which is just kind of like bushes. And at the edge of the bus was the canal where we'd sit and we'd like smoke and everything. And that's why I like, I cried in that video because I remember like, I love places like that. I love finding that. And like the stuff me and my ex were doing was sick. Like, we're, you know, we're like, we're waking up early. We've made hot chocolate. We're going to go sit next to the canal and just talk for hours. And I'm not even mindful for any of it. I'm literally just in my head, like, what are you doing with your life? Like, quickly make some money. Like, what are you doing? Like, I don't want to go to work tomorrow. Like, like that guy across the canal is probably going to come over here and stab both of you. Watch out. What if someone walks here? Like, walk a planet just quick. Like, would you jump in the canal or what would you do? Uh, my, like, meanwhile, my girlfriend's just, like, chilling, enjoying herself. And I'm thinking all this shit because I just, just negativity in my mind. And so even when there was things that were fun, I just wasn't having fun. Even when, like, she, I got her playing games and we both got like, gaming PCs. We're playing games. I'm barely having fun. The only times I'd like truly, truly have fun was when if I was like really, really, really high and then we're like faded, too, too faded to like even think straight. So there was like yeah. a sweet spot of like smoking for maybe 10, 15 minutes where I felt good enough and then just crash, go to sleep and just repeat it day by day by day for an entire year. And we like we move into the new apartment. So this was like the nice place. We move into the new apartment, which was like more expensive, draining the bank account even more. And this one's in like the central location. I've sent a video of what the street outside of this apartment looked like to Sam. How would you describe it? Is it the ghetto one? Yeah. <sighs> Fuck me. All right. So it looks like fucking. Uh... <laughs> it looks like Detroit, man. <laughs> Just graffiti all over the walls really dark and dingy there's like these weird sort of garage doors with like muck and bins and oh it's, that was a more expensive place that was eight seven five a month for two people the one that we were living at before was 800 a month and then the place i was living at before that the fancy apartment was 900 so for an extra 25 a week we could have lived in like that fancy apartment i was living next to celebrities and everything moved to this like new place and literally there's like crackheads everywhere that i hear police coming every few days there's like sirens coming on at one point we hear full-on screams and running and everything 
And I just, I had to go to work straight after that. So I checked the news. Some guy's just been stabbed like two, two streets away from us. And mm. we go to the shops, just anxious as fuck. We do, I, I go to the gym, anxious as fuck, just constantly looking behind myself, just worried about stuff, hating my life. I, I, I lived like this for a year and I knew about self-improvement for this entire year. I knew about meditation. I knew about, obviously I knew about working out. Maybe I was working out like two times per week. So just about enough to maintain some gains. Diet shit, bank accounts drained. A very, very depressing time. And, you know, like I, I tried to fix it, but it really has shown me that your environment truly, truly does determine a lot of how you're going to act and the people you're next to. And the girl I was with, like, she wasn't a bad girl at all, but she just wasn't a girl on self-improvement, even though, like, I, I seem to do this. If I get with a girl, I, I essentially try to put them onto self-improvement. So I had this girl that I was, I was with training in the gym with me since, like, second year of uni. So obviously she built up, like, some nice glutes and that. And so every now and then I get, like... leg press, yeah? <laughs> Ten sets of leg press. <laughs> the glute kickbacks and that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What was the question? Why exactly a year ago? I keep saying that. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you fucking answered it really well. I'm glad you did too. Cause like, I've just heard a lot of stuff, which I had actually not heard before from it in all of your videos. Um, I now have a deeper understanding of like why you say mental health is so important environment. Um, and your, your anxiety in general, like I can, I can absolutely understand like why that would hit you so hard in that environment as well. That's fucking, that's pretty crazy, man. Did you, um, did you have like a specific thing which flipped in your mind at that time, which made you realize like this needs to fucking change right now? No. Or was it just a c accumulation? Yeah, it was, it was like a very, very slow tr transition. So when I read my mm -hmm. blue journal, that's when I start feeling sick because I, I was debating it for literally months thinking, okay, what should I do? I can try and I can move out to somewhere else by myself, but I probably wouldn't be able to afford it. And my girlfriend, like she'd literally help me move in and then she'd be around like every day anyway. So there's no point in living by myself. Then we could just stay and keep trying to like improve things. And I've done that so many times, but let's do it one more. You know, I'm writing in the journal, like let's try and do it one more time. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up early and I'm not going to smoke and I literally like the next sentence is I woke up early, but I smoked like that happens a lot in that journal. And then the final debate, which I knew was the right answer was just moving back home to family. And in fact, yeah, there was, there was like an actual moment that convinced me that I probably should do that. And it was when I started speaking to my family again, a little bit more. So I didn't speak to them for close to a year. I'd say at least about seven months or so. I just lived without family, which I don't think anyone who's watching this, unless they've fully done this drastic shit, would actually be able to realize what that feels like. Because you are on your own at that point when you've got your family blocked. Like, when you get bills that you can't afford, it's, it's on you now, motherfucker. Like, you you have to yeah. get the shifts now, do you know what I mean? No it's, calling mommy and be like, mom, can I borrow? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I knew that they would still have my back for something like that, but obviously I'm, I'm the big man now. I've, I've broke up with them in it, so. But eventually I started speaking to them again. Um, my dad actually, my dad found my, my girlfriend, he found, oh, I don't even know what to call him. And I did call him my girlfriend, but just like the plate. Do you know what I mean? So my dad found her on Facebook and messaged her saying like, they haven't seen me for a while. They're worried and they wanted to speak to me and they wanted me to like come home to, uh, to my brother's like event because he's getting married. And it was just, do you know what I mean? Imagine that. Imagine you just dip out the family for a bit. And I was like, your brother's getting married. You didn't even know that he was like dating someone or anything. And it's, yeah, like cool. life moves on but that's the thing that's what it made me realize like when she told me this and she showed me the message i just thought like shit like life actually moves on like I, i've done nothing with my life i've just been smoking every day trying to like you know set these goals for myself in this journal and then just abandoning all the goals but like life's moved on like my family is just completely different now i didn't even go to that that event like mental health was too bad but eventually i am speaking to my family a bit more and we're like warming up a little bit, speak to my mom and we both start crying and everything. And it was one point when I took the science of wellbeing course and I start like, you know, I was taking, watching maybe about two to three minutes per day per like 
couple of days. And at one point she starts talking about like gratitude because I sk- skipped a little bit into it. She's talking about gratitude for like your family and for everything. And I started just thinking, okay, like I've never done this before. Like, what could I be happy about my family? Because I hated them all. Like they, they ruined my life. That's what was my, my mindset was. Mm. And something got me thinking of how and why I was in this country. And, oh yeah, it's, it's oh God, it's... Did I ever tell you the, the homeless man story? No. So at this point, when we moved to the new apartment, I'm, I'm now not working full-time in that customer service job with those people that I wasn't vibing with. I've moved yeah. to like a part-time night shift job in a homeless accommodation. And mm. that, that job was mm. fucking sick. I've got this laptop. I'm literally going there. I'm drop shipping on shift. You, like, were, you were researching drop shipping and shit. You know I mean? yeah. So I was like multitasking. I'm getting paid like nine pounds an hour to just go to sleep there, make hot chocolates, jack off in the toilet like four times and that. Like, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so a guy moves in, in there and he's, it's like a temporary accommodation. So, you, you know, the homeless people will get referred by the town hall. They'll get a room there for like two weeks and then they're expected to like go somewhere else. And the guy comes in, he doesn't speak English and he's from Pakistan. Not, not exactly the same place. And so we, we speak a somewhat different language, but it's like close enough that we can understand each other, but he doesn't speak English. And I, I haven't spoken or do for like a solid couple of years, really. Like, so it's hard to communicate, but we get by and it starts getting like, <laughs> I started helping him because he didn't have like any benefits or anything. Most of the guys there in the UK, we have this thing called universal credit, which pretty much everyone gets. And it gives you like a solid couple of hundred pounds. Like most, I don't pretty sure most countries don't have something like this. So it gives you, let's say $500 a month. If you don't have a job or anything, especially if you've got like, if you're homeless, if you've got mental health problems or anything Mm -hmm. and all the guys there were on it. So even though they were in this accommodation, it was like they had a couple hundred coming in that they were just spending on drugs. And this guy got denied for it. And so he had literally no income at all for the the couple of weeks that he was there. No money, no nothing. And, you know, we give like the most basic food in this place. Not even food, honestly, literally just like milk and, and the like brand flake cereal and that. And at one point, I get in and my manager said like, we actually have to tell him like he can't eat that much cereal because he's had like six bowls today. Like that's what he was literally just eating. And I had to tell him like he couldn't eat that much. And so eventually I'm like, I'm just buying this guy food at the the Tesco. I'm buying him food and everything. And we're getting a bit closer. I'm trying to like, then I, you know, I'm taking a little bit of responsibility for his, his benefit application. But honestly, the, the government website sh- just used to stress me the fuck out, bro. Like, mental health was, was terrible. I, I'm, I'm feeling like heat arise from my body right now, even thinking about this period of my life because I'd, I'd try and do it. And it was like a dead end just everywhere, like dead links on the, you know, imagine trying to do this shit, like try and sort someone's benefits who doesn't speak English, who, you know, he's got like a document of stuff, but you don't even know what the stuff is or anything. And then you click on the website, click on the link to like, and it says, oh, apply for it here. You click on the link and like the website's down. And then you're like, oh, call this, this thing but you've got a call between eight and five thirty so you wake up tomorrow at eight and they're not picking up you know trying to book a gp appointment and shit like by yourself it's, it was imagine doing exactly this with someone else mean. man yeah. and when when you're a guy who gets stressed out at this shit like i've never been good with this stuff by the way like even before mental health problems i've just always yeah. been bad with like websites and do you know what i mean I'm, I'm like a boomer now where i don't even know how to use like discord or anything so imagine <laughs> at, at this point when most of the time i was trying to do this i was high as well <laughs> and so eventually yeah we're getting scared for this guy because we're pretty sure like because you don't even get told what 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 day they're getting kicked out of the, the temporary accommodation they just get kicked out and eventually they can go back to the town hall to try and get somewhere new but then Oh yeah, and this was the thing. He couldn't go back there because since it's odd, oh, the whole system's fucked. And for a homeless person to get accommodation, which is free, they have to get benefits that pays for it. And so because he wasn't on benefits, his his account was like indebted at this point with the accommodation that he was staying at at my place. And so his social worker, like our social worker, which you know was doing the case for him as well, was saying like, by the time it ends, he literally couldn't even go back to town hall because they'll be indebted by like a couple hundred pounds and they won't give him another place. So he'll be like on the street homeless, which was, I don't think he's ever experienced before. 
so weird, you know, I'm tra- proper trying to do all this whilst he's still there. And eventually I get into the, to work one day and the manager just says like, yeah, he's been removed. So they got him like a one or two night stay in like the hotel right next to us. And it's just ended now as well. So he's been like kind of removed from there. So he's somewhere on the street or something. I don't know. And he calls the the place and I just about speak to him saying like he's in, he's in the hotel lobby. So I walk in and he's got all of his stuff there. He's clutching like a, a Kellogg's box, like a cereal box that he sort of took from our accommodation. He's just clutching onto that. Like that's his food. That's like his possession. That's all he had. He's like rocking backwards and forth and everything. He just doesn't know what's going on. COVID's hit by this point. Everyone's stressing the fuck out as well. Get stressful, man. I bring him into my place, but I was essentially supposed to get fired for this because you're not supposed to like bring someone into like the office or anything bring him in there it's like i'm doing night shift as well so it's like midnight and i've just got like a guy next to me when i should be like working and sleeping and shit and so i start scouring the internet go on instead of doing the the government websites because i tried calling all them but i went onto reddit and went onto the subreddit for manchester made one post and three people messaged me that they'll buy him a hotel room and two people actually straight up just bought it and so i had to actually say to someone like oh shit sorry like we've already got one one girl buys it her name is Emma as well. Shout out to Emma <laughs> if, if she's watching. She buys that's really it. Kind, yeah. huh? That's really kind, Jim. Yeah. Bro, it, it's not even, that's not even it, man. It's, so she buys like the, the two nights at like this little Airbnb, like bed and breakfast nearby. So we move him all there. And then I'm like, you know, still trying to do this universal credit application and everything. And eventually we're trying to find somewhere else for him to go because he's only got two nights there. So we're looking for like Airbnbs and everything. See a place and, Emma calls me up speaking to her and, and she's like, oh yeah, like I was going to save up for a holiday, but I'll get, get him a month's stay at that place. So she puts down like a, a total of like 500 pounds, two nights first, and then like a whole month in this Airbnb. That gives us enough like hope and t- runway. We move him into this new place, middle of COVID. No one knows what the fuck, like before the masks came out or anything, this was when the shop started getting ransacked. There's nothing to buy or anything. And everyone's scared like shitless and we're getting told okay just stay inside your house don't do anything i'm taking like ubers all around manchester with a homeless guy moving him into this new place and everything (laughs) still clutching the catalogs and everything and move him in there got my laptop we start going through like the universal credit application resend it and it just gets accepted and now he starts getting 700 pounds a month like 300 and something for the airbnb to stay there long term 300 for him to spend and I'd like to say that the story ends there on like a positive note, but honestly, after you take, when you take responsibility for someone who can't take responsibility for themselves, which this guy couldn't, he was, he was also like, like he had some severe mental health problems. He had schizophrenia and I'm assuming like he would have had like depression and anxiety as well. And, you know, he doesn't speak the common tongue or anything. Moves into the place. He's, you know, he's got the money sorted. He's got the place sorted and it's COVID and everything. And then, like he needs more help is you know his his card's been declined for some reason so i've got to go and like deal with that his he you know he needs to get medication from the gp but how is he supposed to get there because he's in a new place and he doesn't know that place so i have to get him an uber i'm not going to message him like oh yeah can you uh bank transfer me the uber? Yeah, i'm not going to do that shit so I, i'm paying out of my money like at this point genuinely this homeless guy had more money than i did dead ass <laughs> like, i'm fucking broker than a homeless guy at this point but still you know what i mean i'm doing it and this was probably about March or April or so. And I was helping this guy for a couple of months, even after I moved back home. But the reason why I bring it up is because he reminded me of my dad. Not like my dad's not homeless or like got schizophrenia, but he just kind of like, they looked a little bit similar. And you may have not ex- actually experienced this, but my brown guys who live in the UK will, where we just kind of, like, you, you have like more connectivity with someone who's off the same race as you. So I don't think white British people would experience this in this country because everyone's like the yeah. same as you. But if, for example, you were in India and there's one other white person, you'd, you know, you'd give each other like the, like, <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> so we've got this here. And so when, do you know I mean, like I, I formed like almost an attachment to him straight away, especially because he just, he kind of looked like my dad. And then also because I knew that he had mental health problems and I'm going through mental health shit as well. And so, this was all in my mind and so eventually i'm thinking about like what to be grateful for and i was also thinking like why this guy is even here like his life's terrible here he had a wife and kids in pakistan as well and he just didn't want to go back for like some big reason that he 
couldn't speak about something okay he's been like pushed away because of mental health problems or something like that and I was actually thinking like okay how does someone come from Pakistan to this country like without fully being fluent it like like how what before websites were made how the fuck do you do that you go to like a, a place with which is there's no google maps like you go to like this embassy with like a letter we're like where'd you get that letter like how do you even like it, it was blowing my mind to think that this people were doing this before the internet and i was like how did my dad do it and my dad was like he got us from pakistan to here when we were kids and so one time i messaged him just saying that i was grateful for him and it was the first time i've said something nice to him genuinely first like nice conversation we had and you know, I was expecting him to just say like, oh, you know, no worries, my son or something. But he sends me like a lot of messages back saying like he's, he did it for us. In, in Pakistan, he was high up in his position. Like he worked as an, an engineer in a paper mill and he got like, he had 500 people working for him and everything like high up in this place. We had mansions, we literally had servants and everything. But to give us like a better life, a better, better education, he moved us here. And he his text was that, he worked like that. And then when we moved here, he's worked like a laborer in jobs that he's, he's been attacked in, in the low end jobs, like what brown people do, like taxis and shopkeepers. And it never really occurred to me before this point to think like, of course he doesn't want to live like that. Like he doesn't want to be a shopkeeper. He doesn't want to be a taxi driver. Like here's a guy who gave up his entire life to move his family to the UK and I got like such a level of gratitude for that. And like, I, I was never grateful for this, like for my entire life. And when it, after he sent all these messages, it was the first time where I was like fully, fully thinking like, like, you know what I mean? He's, he's put his entire life for our family to, to enjoy this place and to, to have this level of education. And I remember, yeah, cause I, I remember feeling like I was, I was very, very privileged that I was British. I forgot how this came up, but when, when you live in this country and when, you know, even though I'm, I'm brown, I was born in Pakistan, but I've been in this country for like many years, got a British passport, you get used to it, like hedonic ad- adaptation or some shit. So it's essentially like valueless in the sense I don't think about it. Mm-hmm. One time I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that's actually so valuable that my English is this good because there's people who, live in the same country that we should be living in if my dad didn't make this change and they're working for a tenth of like what i'm working for and my life has been made easy by someone sacrificing their their 10 20 years of hard work and so it's the first time that i actually felt like grateful for my dad and grateful for my mom and that was like at this point then the the negativity of coming back home severely reduced but it still felt like really awkward and it still felt like um something i felt unable to do because i was i was comfortable in manchester like i wasn't comfortable with the bad habits and everything but i was comfortable in the sense that i was already there and and it was still going to be a big decision to move back yeah but, big change you know what i mean yeah I, I lived by myself or like you know with with jade for like two three three years like i moved out when i was like 19 and i was about just about 23, just under 23. So it was almost like three, three and a half years that I lived by myself. But because of this conversation, because of the science of well-being course that opened up and taught me the word gratitude, which I just never really thought before ever in my life, got me thinking about like, got me into like positive thinking again, because I had lost that, but I was usually a really positive guy. So then at this point, I'd already been considering moving home even before this, but you know, it was awkward to think like I haven't spoken to my family at all, but like I could, you know, they're not going to turn me away if I like bring all my shit back. But at this point I knew like they wanted me to move home. And so I'm still living with Jade, but then it just feels, it feels right to fully, fully think, okay, I can move home. And I delay it for like, you know, I mean to go home like this weekend and I end up delaying it till next week and then next weekend. And then I, you, you know as the anxious attachment style like I wasn't I didn't want to be with the girl that I was with but I knew that I'd suffer a huge heartbreak feeling that if I left because not only you know I, I loved the girl and I lived with her 
like unless you've truly lived with with a girl that you've dated i don't think you'll you'll understand the level of it, attachment and investment that you get in someone like just having a girlfriend is, is you know a big investment it's a big like um attachment and connection that you build but when you live with someone and it's you're living with your girlfriend together you do everything together like she's having a shit i'm brushing my teeth do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, she's like, she's weeing in the toilet. I'm weeing in the, the sink. Like, <laughs> <laughs> true story. <laughs> like, we, we do everything. And I knew that that was going to be like a huge, huge, like, pain when I when I left. And so that's what I was delaying for, for many, many months. I chose to live in that place where I, I had like such a painful time. Imagine like knowing that you had, you had some potential and being in such a like depressed and stressful place and anxious place that I was doing everything wrong, but I was just staying just because I didn't want to experience like the separation feeling from this girl that I'd connected with. But eventually because like my mom and up to my family and stuff, and that feels like it's opening up and it's becoming really bright, then it made the transition like possible. And so near about May, for a couple of months, literally, like it made it possible. I was thinking, okay, I'm going to move home. I, I, I am going to move home, told everyone, told Jade. Just kind of didn't end up doing it because COVID got worse. And then we're thinking like, wait, should we, she was thinking about going home for like a couple of weeks anyway. And we were both mm. going to go at the same time. But we were like, wait, should we? Because we've been in the city. Manchester's like a hot spot. What if we're like, no one knows at this point, is, like, is it a flu or whatever? You know what I mean? So we didn't know, like, we probably do have it because we've been around fucking crackheads. I work in a homeless accommodation as well. And... I'm not exactly like following the rules. We're not supposed to like, you know, speak to the guys or anything every, every time I see him. But yeah, yeah, bro, what you say? <laughs> like, yeah, bro, so, what's up, G? <laughs> <laughs> just getting COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so delaying it for a while, but yeah, eventually just make the decision. I say, I'm just going to go home for like one or two days. And that was, that was like the, the point. As soon as I went home, hugged everyone, just brought my laptop home, did pretty good work at home, came back, and as soon as I came back, I, I literally remember this. It was like, I forgot what life was like there in that self-improvement depression. Because I went, I came home, it was normal. I woke up, I was doing, you know, work on my laptop and everything. I'm, I'm going for a walk. We've got like rabbits to play with. I'm just doing normal stuff. I get back and it's like, there was nothing to do but smoke weed. Like there was nothing to do but just sit in the apartment, watch TV and go on our computers. And why would you do that if you're not going to smoke weed? And so... The day I come back, I'm, I'm literally journaling. Like, I've got this on my journal page that ordering weed, right? We didn't have it in. So I, like, called the guy, like, <clears throat> right, bro, can I can I get um, three 20 bags, please? Like, <laughs> I'm calling the guy, and I'm thinking, I wrote it, ordering this, I know for a fact I can't stay. I know for a fact that I'm, I'm smoking. I'm doing all the bad habits just because I'm living here because I didn't even – I thought I'd be, you know, addicted to weed. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep or anything or operate without it when I came back for a couple of days. Didn't even think about it at all. In fact, I didn't even think – didn't even know that the the covid lockdown was a thing like I, I didn't even feel anything negative when i came back like it just felt like i was just back to being a child of like freedom and everything and so i wrote this down like ordering this weed i know that i can't stay and so i'm just gonna like wait until i actually wrote this and i thought that's a fucking stupid idea but i said i'll wait till the weed's done and then i'll leave i was like is that literally <laughs> like is that how addicted you are like how dependent you are that you're just gonna stay until the weed's rinsed out don't be wasteful so, hamza you gotta <laughs> smoke the weed okay <laughs> <laughs> binge eaters mindset and it's like you gotta finish it off but yeah so i have like a couple of days back there and then fully fully just pack everything up one morning my dad comes move everything out like exactly how i envisioned envisioned it where my girlfriend is she's like helping me carrying it all with like a proper smile on her face and like you know cutesy smile and the moment it's the last things in the car and we're like hugging in private she bursts into tears and it's like her attachment is now being severed and that's what i was i was staying away from for literally months because i didn't want to see that i didn't want to see like the girl i had lived with just cry like you know the cry that makes someone look like a like a, a boy or a girl like a child seeing that i didn't even cry next to her but i didn't even cry at all actually i, I didn't cry next to her i came back home and i just kind of i felt close to crying at home because i remember i came home and i you know i, I hadn't been here for literally years 
And the first thing I did was bring all my clothes up and my sister's helping me put it in the wardrobe and it just got too stressful. Like putting clothes in a wardrobe got too stressful because my mental health was shit and I'm kind of going through like a breakup or something. And that's when there's nothing to do but self-improve. Like that was all that was on my mind. I didn't even think about YouTube at this point. I was just thinking about like drop shipping. I was doing like not even email marketing. We can say like the dumbest version of email marketing. That was like kind of like my business at the time. That's all I'm doing. I'm just waking up doing that, hitting the gym. And I've got the gymnastic ring. So I start going for those workouts. I'm just being productive like instantly. And that was the, the transition. Wow, dude. That's a fucking beautiful story, man. Especially of that homeless guy too. Like what you did for him, that was like, that was really fucking beautiful, man. And uh, and the woman from Reddit to Emma, who who just selflessly gave them, that was very fucking... Emma's the, the goat. She's the MVP of this story. <laughs> we need an Emma emoji for the Discord. <laughs> it's like a woman Adonis. <laughs> I didn't even wow, finish man. the story, but with the, the homeless guy. Yeah. So yeah. I move I move back. And he still needs my help at this point. And I realized at one point, like literally it's, it's an extra month since I moved back. I've not even been in Manchester or anything. And he's still calling me like every single day, cut three, four times a day. I'm telling my parents and they're telling, telling me like, you know, you need to stop talking to me. You need to stop helping him. You don't even live there anymore. Someone else has to help him. I felt like really heartless doing that. And I was trying to set him up with something like, when I think back now, you know, I want to slap myself. So you've, you set him up with a lot. He's, he's just going to have to like stay at that place and not have you as like his personal assistant. And if his card's not working, if he, if he's struggling to get like the medication from the GP or something, it's like, he's going to have to figure it out. And if you solve his problems, you'll need to keep solving his problems. And so I literally just I blocked him one day and never heard of him again. That's why the story that's, is like, that's... That's the hard truth, though, isn't it? Mm. The story is like, not as as pleasant and as, as you know, like oh my god, Hamza's help the the homeless guy. It's like, well, it is what it you is, did for him was still like, you know, fan fucking tastic, dude. Like really, like jumping through that many hoops for a guy you don't even know, you know, it was a beautiful thing, and you did set him up. You set him up nicely. Um, what I'll say. For anyone who struggles with their medication and stuff like that, there's actually a service called um, Pharmacy to You, which you can set up online. And um, it, it basically just does everything for you. It delivers the medication straight to your house. Um, I bet you wish you knew about this <laughs> back then. <laughs> but it basically, it just acts as a middleman between you and your GP. So you go on the website, you log in, you say, I need this. They request it from the GP. They approve it. They send it to your house. It's really good. And it saved me a lot of trips to the GP when I was on my antidepressants. That was a fucking beautiful story, man. <sighs> I, I can't even begin to like unpack that because it's just so... I'm glad I'm glad that you've talked about it like in, in that much depth because like obviously I've had like a good general idea of like if I was to make three points, um, which I, I thought were the biggest factors, it would have been family, your mental health, and um, probably like something to do with like, you know, not having the purpose of, of the work or whatever, something like that. But like, you've just sort of fucking laid it out so intricately down. Mm. And that, that story about how you um, sort of, gain to this newfound gratitude for your dad as well just thinking about how much he sacrificed to get you like a better life so that's that's fucking beautiful man mm. that really is that's that's so nice I'm, I'm very very glad i learned about gratitude and that's why i preach it to you boys because it's truly truly like mindfulness and gratitude i preach it so much because i have lived it i've I've had a similar life to the guys who watch my videos. I knew it. I've played video games for the 10 hours a day. I've done that, all that stupid shit. And there's two things that have saved me from that life. And it is mindfulness and gratitude. 
after you get into them for a while, you realize you genuinely do not need anything else apart from my, if you have mindfulness and gratitude, you genuinely do not need anything else. Like you can be broke. You can be literally homeless. You could literally be dying and you'd be okay. Because imagine you're dying with full of gratitude. You would be one of those people who literally die with a smile on their face, like telling everyone to like not cry and to like, you know, cherish their, their moments instead of crying for their, their loss and shit. If you're mindful of everything, you're no longer deep in thought about random shit. You get to just enjoy the present moment being sat here. That's, you know, the sentence I always say is like, I get to sit here. I could stare at the wall and I'm literally happy now. And before I needed to indulge in like the most fucking dopamine possible to feel the smallest amount of enjoyment from it because I wasn't mindful and because I wasn't grateful. How do you get there, Hamza? Meditate and do gratitude journaling, bro. How many times do I have to say it? <laughs> I've tried to, to meditate, Hamza, and I didn't even... I wanted to say it for the boys at home. <laughs> uh, let's talk about this um, last podcast you did. Yeah. The, uh, the Black Pill podcast with uh, Mr. Wheatman. Wheat Waffles. Wheat Waffles. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on his listening skills, Hamza? Yeah, not so good. I was, I knew it at the time when we were speaking, but when I was rewatching a bit of the podcast, I really realized like, yo, this, this motherfucker was interrupting every sentence that I was saying, man. <laughs> it wasn't like he came into it with a debate mindset, right? Yeah. Which is like, that's already like an L because it's not a debate. It's a fucking podcast. But the thing is he came into a debate mindset like he was like coming against like hard heavy hitting fire when you were just like sat there like smiling so he had this like really combative mindset from the get-go mm. for no good reason like no, i feel it, like if it he was a good reason yeah when someone is very very defensive like that which these black pill guys seem to be you're only defensive if you deep down you know that you're fucked that's it if you have like a, a passive like doing the way that I was, I'm not going to fight for the red pill because I know it's true because I know it's the best, yeah. not like you know, the best way to live forever, but in terms of like for young men who want to improve themselves, get their SMV up and to learn how to start like lifting and talking to girls is the best thing you can do by far. And so I don't need to like push it down. Anymore. I don't need to like interrupt someone and try and get my point across. He was very, ah, check out this graph. Dude. Gonna graph it. <laughs> Have you seen the statistics? Like, he was very eager to do this. Like, he was just a, an excited young man who wanted to talk about like his toys and it. Like, but have you seen this toy? Have you seen he, he was like that because he wanted to like prove his point. And I realized I, I'm not the type of person who needs to like essentially prove my point. I try to encourage, you know, give advice and maybe in like, you know, my way of doing it, it was a bit like aggressive punching the camera and shit, but that's, it's not to try and change someone's mind. It's to try and just educate someone who's already agreeing with me. I don't really do things with people who disagree with me. Maybe it's a good level of frame or something, but I don't speak to, if someone disagrees with me, like on something important, like we just don't have that conversation because I know that at least for me, the things I believe in are right. And so I don't ever need the, the reason to like be defensive about it because if someone tells me the red pill is wrong, it'll be like, you know, I'll see it in a comment. Someone saying, oh, the red pill is like, oh, fuck you, you dumbass. I'm like, all right, go lost. I don't know, but here's, here's the graph. Like, <laughs> I don't need to do that shit, you know what I mean? If you argue with like, not even argue, but if you say something to like a black pillar, like YouTube video, and you'll get 10 of them replying to you with all the, the data and they'll <laughs> call me a curry cell and everything. Like they, they're heated in this because honestly, they know that they're wrong. If you knew that you were right, you'd have the nonchalance of saying, if they were truly black pills, right? Because these are fake black pills, right? These are what, I, what I've said before is fake cells. These are not exactly fake cells. These are like just the, the weirdly in cell guys, but they're not truly black pills because if you were truly black pill, if you were truly just giving up and you're saying, okay, it's just genetics, we can't change it. You would not have a YouTube channel about it. You would not be posting on all these YouTube comments saying like, oh, you know, like you, you're trying to convince other people because you're trying to convince yourself. That's why you don't see me usually arguing in the comments because I'm not trying to convince myself of anything because I know. I don't see that. Why, 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 would a, why would a black pill person not have a YouTube channel? They w to be honest, when I said that, I was thinking, oh yeah, but for business, fair enough. For, because that's, that's an extra purpose. Okay, so obviously... Wheat Waffles was trying to come on with this. Um, he was criticizing my business and everything and saying like, oh, you know, you're, you're selling all these programs and stuff. Yeah, he was, he, he was he trying to be condescending. Such a, 
he had such Negative a wrong it. like view of what you were doing as well like it's like he just quite he saw you do coaching and he was like oh well there's like the other fucking knobheads who do coaching <laughs> it's like no you don't you don't even do dating fucking like coaching like not even close not even fucking close you're like well, no, what we do is we focus on mental health. Uh, you're a dying coach. Yeah, like, that, <laughs> I could tell okay. you he just didn't do his research in it. And the issue is that I don't personally, I don't think, at least for me, I can't argue with someone like this because for me to win the argument is to like lose the war. And there's a few times I've said on the YouTube, like potentially that might have been a better podcast. Like, you know what I mean? It probably would have been more entertaining if I was fucking, oh, but look, look, look at this graph. Look at this picture of Sam naked. <laughs> oh, my <hang on>. God. <laughs> like, what would you rate him? <laughs> <laughs> I bet he would give me like a five or a four. It's so vain too. Just like, oh yeah, you're, you're like a six, mate. You're it's, a six. It's not even close, bro. Like every time I had a good point, he, he avoided... Like this is not, you can't win against these type of internet argue yeah. argue uh, argumentators or whatever the fuck you want to debaters. Yeah. You can't win because Debaters. they'll have great points. Like this motherfucker's writing notes and he's got collected data, so he's gonna win in that sense, right? But I'm gonna have a few comebacks every now and then from real life experience, not from data. When I do have something good to say, he was very quickly and like efficiently able to just change the conversation and Shifted talk about years, something yeah. else. Because yep. I, one of the questions I asked is we're both six out of 10. So why am I getting like 20, 30, 40 more matches per day than you? And he, he was avoiding the question. The reason why, if we're both six out of 10s in the face and he said, okay, only face matters, body doesn't matter. What's the difference then? It's the body. It's the fact that my body makes me, okay, my, my face, let's say it's a six. My body makes me like overall like an eight because my body's close enough to a 10 out of 10. And that's and why your frame. I, I, you can tell someone, you can tell someone's like confident and outgoing just from their pictures. Yeah. I bet that guy's pictures are like my old Tinder profile pictures where it's just like he's in his room and he just takes his phone. It's like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, they're, they're not going to get you anywhere. Your pictures, you're out, you're fucking, you know, you got your fucking pack out, you got girls with you. Yeah, dude, no shit. Like, it's, it's, and it's, it's so jarring to me as well in that podcast when multiple times he suggests that you're avoiding his questions, but like, you're literally not. He's just, he's piling on like, he Ten makes a point, point and yeah. then he fucking is like, oh, and another thing as well. And then he talks for like 20 minutes and then you're like, I'm trying to dissect okay. it and then my yeah, so first like, okay, so dissected for it. Last he's like, wait, point, <laughs> for your last point, real quick, let's talk, and then he's like, oh, I just want to point out, mate, that you're not actually answering any of my questions. <laughs> it's like, fuck, <laughs> what do you want me to do, man? Oh my God, that guy, that guy uh, is not, getting any luck with girls because of his looks it's because of his horrible fucking yeah. personality yeah, and, that's, sure. and then how do you say this to, to guys God. who genuinely believe that, oh personality is nothing like they'll make all these auti- every i keep like fucking flexing these massive biceps bro they make these autistic graphs of okay if, if this guy's a nine out of ten or ten out of ten in looks then he, he can be a zero out of ten in game like that that's complete bullshit it, it, the good arguments for me only came after I was overthinking about what I'd say to the, you know, like you think of the best things to say after an argument ends like two yeah. days after. Yes. And, and, and this is what like, I'm sleeping at 2am. And I'm thing, like, with a, here's another point. <laughs> with a guy like that, who's just piling on shit. It's just, you don't get to speak. You, know, you, you can't think you can't yeah. fucking think. Cause it's just piling on shit. It's just impossible. It's an impossible situation to win. Yeah. But, but like, I, I feel like even that. though, even though you were in that situation, I think you actually nailed it. Because, like, even in his comments, I see, like, obviously they're all, like, you know, bowing down to him, sucking his cock and all that. But, like, even some of those guys are like, you know what, man? Uh, you both made good points. And the guy was actually really respectful in that. And it's like, yeah, dude. So, like, <laughs> why don't you fucking... <laughs> why don't you tell your boy, right, to, to calm the fuck down next time and actually have a fucking conversation? It wasn't a debate. It wasn't a fucking... You invited him onto a podcast. To discuss and he was just like oh i got a date of facts and it's like fuck um I, I don't want to criticize the guy but from the start of the call before you know we had like a few seconds before we started the podcast i could tell immediately what type of guy he was that he wasn't like he's not clued up on social skills he's not clued up on intrapersonal skills and 
is it like his he cropped out the last 20 if you're watching this on my channel like he's cropped out like the last 20 minutes of the podcast on his channel because that's when his argument starts falling completely through that's when i was like actually getting a little bit heated i'm i'm bringing up all these like i i stopped going into like conversation mode and i'm now like saying look at you said this you said this you know he's saying okay like genetics if you're brown you're going to be less likely if you've got like this and this and this and i was like i have all of that like I'm brown skin. Can you not see that motherfucker? Like, why do I get 20 times more? What? Well, at least let's say 13 more times. If he said he, he's had three girls in his life and I'm saying that I've probably had about 50, about what? 15 times more girls than in, in my entire life. How? And then straight away, the first thing this motherfucker said was, well, your age. Like that, that's not it though, is it? It's not just, oh, you linearly get more girls as you age. It's that I've done something different for the last few years. I've built that body, which gets these matches. And you can't argue with people who are just, who aren't just arguing about the current points at hand, but they're arguing about their excuse for inactivity because they're not just, he's not just talking about the current debate of like looks that he's talking about the fact that he hasn't worked out and he hasn't lifted weights. And then his advice is, is somewhat similar to like self-improvement anyway which is okay move to a country it's kind of stupid advice but it's like that's still a, a bit of improvement is move to a country where you, your smv is higher that's that's literally red pill advice but it's sold in like a black pill package and at the end of the day you can in sales you can either sell fear or hope and this guy's selling fear i'm selling hope and fuck it there's there's your choice and if, if you're watching this and you're you're currently debating black or red pill choose what you want your life to be like and whatever pill you take is going to shape your reality and the red pill says you can make improvements and it, it is a positive it although gets a lot of hate it's a very very positive pill to take like i am the man i am today because i took it when i was like 17 18 years old and you've seen how if there's one word that describes black pill the guys and you see their comments it's just negative. It's just literally negative, and I don't understand why you'd want to live like that. Yeah, <clears throat> it is literally. Film. No, no. <laughs> oh my god! Not it's, moving to Thailand. It's, <laughs> it's such a miserable outlook on life, and I, I seriously don't understand. Even if like some of the shit he says is true, like I oh, have yeah, brown people are like, you, you fucking have like slightly less luck with women, like. Even if that's true. But that's because like, less less brown people are just attractive, but in, in every sense, most... It, one time I, I had this conversation with my brother years ago and he put it so well where he said, it's not that girls don't like black guys or brown guys or short guys. They just don't like unattractive black guys or brown guys or short guys. If you are attractive and brown, girls like it. If you're unattractive and brown, unattractive not just in looks, but in every characteristic possible, girls don't like it. And usually, like, I've been through both. Any guy can go through both. Any guy can be ugly and black, and any guy can be attractive and black. And when he becomes attractive, he now realizes that being black was not the limitation that he thought it was. And in fact, now girls are saying, like, oh, yeah, you're, you're the first black guy I've ever fucked before. Like, give me, give me that slave dick and your girl. Like, white girls are spending. <laughs> <laughs> like white girls especially they, they actually love this shit bro i don't know about different countries but i'm pretty sure the guy i was speaking to wheat waffles he's in the uk as well it, it like minorities are popping right now like white girls are specifically not going towards sorry white girls are specifically not going towards white guys anymore like they, they specifically are getting turned off on them because of this like hip-hop culture that's popping right now so it's it's your debate saying that okay if you're brown skinned it's over if you're you're, you're asian it's that's because a lot of brown guys aren't attractive that's because a lot of brown guys like more brown guys are probably overweight than than white guys are more do you brown think guys that came about then do you think that sort of like um argument that he made that brown guys are less like lucky or whatever do you think that came about because like brown like brown guys who are like ugly or whatever just pointed to it and being like oh it's because i'm brown yeah. and then it just became this like yeah. stereotype that's a very very good point that's why people talk about it so much it's those guys could have said oh these girls don't like me because i've got a fat double chin and i'm skinny fat and i, I try and treat them weirdly where i want to love them like they're my mother but i also want to abuse them and i want to also want to like treat them like shit because we're supposed to do that in our culture that's why like right. 
these guys think the game doesn't matter. Like, you know, they, they, they found this like proper bad that this, this was, you know, he, him on his, on his channel as well and his boys, they were literally laughing and saying like, oh, this guy's delusional. He thinks that game is insulting the woman's face. Like, you know, he showed up the Tinder's, Tinder picture. The guy got her number through that message. Like that is actually good game. If you don't think making fun of a girl is like, oh, at least okay game, you're, you, you don't have the experience to even talk about it, let's be honest. And so this guy, you know, he's, he's talking about Tinder game, but he doesn't get girls on Tinder. Now, maybe he's my big fat ego, but I do pretty well on Tinder better than any guy I've ever met in my entire life. I get more matches than any guy I've ever met, even included when I see models on, on YouTube and big, big YouTubers. They get less matches than I do because I use it, right? And so I know, like I've done the autistic experiments myself. I don't collect the data, but I've just, I know which works. And this guy, as soon as he said, when I asked him what good game is and he avoided it for a while, then eventually he said, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look through her pictures in her bio. And I was like, there we go. There's, there's like the, this guy's perception of game is to write a fucking pun based on her name. Like that's Reddit stuff. That's like the stuff that you'll see on our Tinder. And that's why these guys don't get laid because whilst they're sending, Hey, like Olivia, I, I, I sure wouldn't like to live with you. <laughs> like the stupid shit like that. They think, <laughs> that was on the ball though. They think that game. That's good game, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I made a pun of it. Like, they think that's good game. And I, I'm sending, oh, like, Jesus. you know, the way I use Tinder is, is it's efficient. I send a copy and paste message, which has, I use it like a marketer. I send a message which high, has the highest percentage response rate. And then I, I do a conversation, which has the highest percentage conversion rate. It's like I'm sending them down a funnel. So the first message, it's not some kind of cringy fucking name-based pun or something. It's a simple statement of, you can be my third wife. You can enter the dungeon now. <laughs> some, something stupid because they're like, oh, what? <laughs> That's how you get them. That's pretty good Tinder game. And you just got, all these guys you get a response. The first message is just for a response. By taking the time to go through her profile, and this was this guy's advice, I know that you're not doing good on Tinder. Because any man who's actually doing good on Tinder does not have the time to look through her profile. Because when you look through her profile, you're already too emotionally invested. You could only do that if you were getting pretty much no matches per day, like one or two matches. You've got the time to look through it. Any man who's actually getting like 20, 30 matches, you don't even click on their profile. Like, I don't remember. I've, maybe I've got 20, 30, 40 matches right now. I don't even remember. Like, maybe I could try it if, we, if me and you like brainstormed right now. Of like, what? I remember one. The woman with the statue in her picture and you were like, yeah. oh, who's that cutie in the picture? Which, to be fair, goes against your advice yeah, just no, no, now, no. but that was too funny, so. <laughs> I'm a seller. <laughs> I mean, that was too laughing. funny. <laughs> uh, basically, guys, that was um, we, me and Hamza were in a call, and he was swiping Tinder at the same time. And he saw a woman who had a picture. Uh, it was her out, and there was like a statue behind her of like a face, like some weird statue with a face on it. Hamza's uh, opener was something like, um, "What was it, Hamza?" <laughs> give me your friends at in the third pick like the instagram yeah. at. that was literally it's kind of funny between us but that's it didn't work like do you know what I mean she wasn't interested guess why yeah but she's she was retarded she she's was retarded, actually but, fucking retarded it, this type of shot doesn't work because it's not attractive like essentially i've just taken the black pillars advice here to look through her pictures so I, I sound like a little bitch of going back again to my word but that type of shit does not work. Girls aren't attracted to you being like so observant. Like, oh, is that is that wallpaper from Ikea? Like, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is fucking funny, man. <laughs> That's not a good game, man. Seriously. Like, if you boys are watching this and you're struggling with Tinder, dead ass, you can steal my line and I guarantee you'll get more responses than ever. Just use, like, it is one of those cringy, not cringy, but like one of those just standard copy and paste lines. Like, you can be my third wife is probably one of my favorite ones. Because they're always like, oh, if I'm not the first one, then. then that that works more if you're brown. I don't think it would work on a white guy. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> you can steal it, bro. You can be my. What, what could you say? My, um, <laughs> my my third punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> my anime girlfriend. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You want to play League of Legends? 
<laughs> hey, you can be my support player. Oh, wait, actually, let me let me read out a message I got on Bumble. Yeah. So on Bumble, the girls have to message you first. And on my profile, I have... Uh, my profile is... My about me is six foot one cult leader. Here's my pics as well. Mm-hmm. On Bumble, you can't use shirtless pics, but like... I'm pretty, you got that sometimes, boxing one. That looks hard. Yeah, I know. This one is <laughs> a review by a friend. And I wrote... He's part of an Asian grooming gang. Don't trust him. The <laughs> 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 so shirt was big. Out with a Tinder girl. Jim Wait, what are you saying? You're not allowed to show those pics. You've got to like be sneaky with it. So if you put a shirtless picture, they'll remove it. But for example, this one's obviously shirtless, but it's like, because it's not clearly shirtless, it's fine. Right. So sometimes right. you can just about get away with one. And oh, she replied now. So this girl messaged me just saying, go on, go on then tell me about the cult. And this is my reply. We're a cult of 3,912 guys who no longer jack off to Instagram models or waste time spurging out on 4chan. Now we write letters of gratitude and look at the trees. <laughs> she just replied with, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I <think I> got a voice. <laughs> nah, that, that was a fucking... That, I, don't, I don't think that was a good fucking reply, bro. <laughs> yeah, fuck that bitch, bro. That was fucking whack. <laughs> This girl just messaged me, hey, are you Muslim? I hate when girls say that because I don't know if they're like, if they want me to say, like, I'm not, hey, are you Muslim? Because if I say yes, Muslim. Oh, Muslim. Yeah. If we said Muslim, I was like, agnostic. That's a badass, like, like a bad question to, the first thing you say is, what's what's your religious beliefs? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what are your politics oh, women on women on these dating apps who who put in their in their fucking uh shit if you're a if you're a conservative swipe left liberal, or whatever so like, yeah no problem <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell you can't be only women can get away with being that fucking picky on dating apps by the way guys do not put anything like that in your fucking bio if you're a dude Cause like you're literally you're you're cutting your, heart, your yeah, own legs off. Race, yeah, yeah, you're cutting your legs off. Yeah, don't still polarize. Like my, if I was given some dating advice, dating app advice specifically, polarizing like showing showing a profile or a bio which makes a girl either really interested in you or really dislike you straight away because it cuts through the bullshit. And so usually I find that if I do this, I get fairly less matches let's say 20 to 30 percent less matches but those matches that i do get are higher quality in the sense that it's what i want so for example i have video i'll have some of not on this one but on tinder for example i've got a picture of me like grabbing a girl's hair and like being stood behind her then i've got one of me literally just naked i'm in a towel girl next to me is pretty much naked it's like a weirdly vibey kind of like a reflection using the blue one and then so I've got these type of pictures and my bio I usually write something like swipe right if you like getting choke. And so girls have swipe right, right on that. I've literally met up some like 10 girls who said that was the reason why they matched with me. It's just, you know, they were like, oh, you know, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like to be choked by you, Mr. Hamza. Fucking Palpatine shooting electricity out of his hands. Tell me about your Tinder game. Yikes. Uh, yikes, dude. Yikes. Okay, so... Um, I have only just recently started to take, like, better pictures. I have, like... I bought... I got two new pictures, which, like, have got me some good success. I actually went on a date, like, last week. Went pretty well. Um, so I haven't I haven't messaged her yet. Oh, fucking hell. I've been throwing it off, dude. I'm kind of nervous, because I, I... Actually, I don't think she she, she wants to be... I'm not right sure. Now. No, 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 absolutely. Did I, Go on. Fu- <sighs> no. <laughs> but my, my game... Think of, a number, uh, think of a number from one to five. If I guess it, then I get to construct the message that you have to send. Four. All right, cool. What? Was it four? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what well, we send to our boys? <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> but I told you I've got like some psychic stuff. <laughs> Are you doing this right now? Yeah, send her a message, man. 
What what you message her oh, on? Fuck's sake, Instagram. Instagram. If you okay. want, I'll send her a message, man. What's what, what's her at? Shut the fuck. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pull up for you. Mate. Okay. Okay. So, the last message I sent was like, oh, I had a great time. She was like, I had a great time too. And I said, let's do it again sometime next week. And she said, yeah. So what? What? Why were? Why am I writing, bro? That was that was a again? few days ago. What? You want to meet her again, like same spot or anything? Yeah. Hmm. So you know, usually at, at this point, I would dead ass like I'd go straight up for like a logistics message, but. I've been transitioning a little bit away from that and actually thinking like sometimes it's actually better to have like a bit of like a warm up. So for example, my message, right. We may as well go with that because I'm not going to lie. Like if that's what's got me success anyway, my message would straight up just be like a small paragraph of like, Hey, I'm grateful for the time for the day. And you and I are going to have drinks on X. But oh, that's ballsy. That's ballsy <laughs> we are doing this this time. <laughs> shut your mouth, bitch. Shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, God. I'm fucking, I feel sick, Hamza. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's, that's if we wanted you to get success. Now, we might just fuck around and send us something stupid. <laughs> what do you mean? No, I, I actually, I actually kind of like it, dude. I, I, she's really cool. We had a yeah. great fucking date. We literally did. I already told you about Todd and Boys for the podcast. Like, I went on this date. I was pissing my pants, pissing my pants. I've never took anyone out before. And I've only just started going out myself as well. So, like, everything was fucking new to me. And it was in the city center. I never go to the city center. No idea how to navigate it. I had to use Google Maps and shit like that. It was, it was fucking nerve wracking. It was probably one of the harder things I've ever done. And I'm fucking really happy I did it. Cause uh, that's fucking that's fat gains, but like first five minutes, I was I was debating the night before as well. I was like Hamza, how do I greet her? I want to give her a hug, uh, and Hamza was like, just fucking do it, you retard. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she arrived and she actually had a cigarette in her hand, and in the other hand she had a bag. So I, I was just like, oh, I can't hug her, can't hug her. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so I flaked on that, and for the first like few minutes when we were walking to the pub it was kind of awkward <laughs> you're like five paces in front of her <laughs> it's like i was leading her to the pub yeah, i was like follow me follow me <laughs> but uh after we sat down and we just fucking chatted we just chatted for like six fucking hours and in between we we switched pubs as well it was fucking it was easy you know it was actually like easy and i feel like my listening skills were great my eye contact was fire. I fucked up the end, though. I fucked up so bad at the end. Oh, God, I fucked up so bad at the end. The whole day, I had great eye contact. At the end, I, I held her hand and walked her to the train station. <sighs> when we reached the point that she was leaving, I did not look her in the eyes, so I didn't gauge if she wanted to kiss, so I just fucking hugged her and said goodbye is ah oh, fuck fuck <laughs> it is what it is and if i was giving um, you i've said this to you but if i think the boys i've experienced stuff like this before <clears throat> i've read it somewhere and the best advice i got for this stuff of if you feel a little bit awkward to go for the kiss at the end don't leave it till the end because imagine okay the hype the the sexual tension of the night goes like this you first meet it's kind of awkward and you're talking you're laughing at one point it goes up here and that's, that's when you kiss. The issue is that if you kiss to say goodbye, it's not like a sexually driven kiss. It's like a weirdly like relationship type of kiss. And that's not the one that you want to go for. That's why it almost feels too awkward to do it at the end. So it goes like this and it starts going like this. So it's actually hard to kiss here. Whereas here is like, it's so natural. So the advice I, I give is that about an hour or two into the day, as soon as you're laughing and stuff, just dead ass like, Go in for it. You don't. You don't have to say anything. You can literally just say like, "Come here," and the girl's gonna know. And even if she like worst case scenario, she goes like like this. It's like if you open yourself up with that honesty that you just wanted to kiss her instead of doing it in like any kind of random weird way. You, it's a win win for you because the rejection is a win in the sense that you know where you stand anyway. And sometimes, like it's happened a few times where you know she's a bit like she didn't realize I was gonna go for a kiss. 
but it was like it wasn't anything that was bad because we kissed literally a minute later because if a girl ever rejects you you can either make it awkward and be like oh well, this is, or you can just play it out and say like oh is that what heartbreak feels like oh my god lauren why did you do that to like there you go and at that point she's like giggling again and you're back to it like don't wait till the end because the tension's gone at that point and then the logistics pop up because in sam's case like she was getting a train who knows if like the train was now or anything Exactly. Top of the yeah. night, you know? Oh fuck, man! I yeah, that's that's my only regret. I I I fucking I I I didn't know this advice before. Hamza told me after because it's literally like his fucking Joseph Goebbels over here, just like fucking blue balling me. But it is what it is. <laughs> so I, I did not make eye time, Just like me, like I'll have you in the ear, just coaching you live. <laughs> yeah, just like. <laughs> But we'll do just, a live. Just ask me about my uh, cool. my sex life. What do I? <laughs> <laughs> but, but just give me the iPod. Let me talk to her. <laughs> Where you meet okay. up? Is there a park there? <clears throat> Grass, like. Yeah. Yeah. We, okay. we we met in like a cathedral square, in city center. Mm. And there's like grass. I used to play Pokemon Go there. <laughs> Is there like enough grass to like sit down and it's not like it's okay to like sit there? Yeah, but the fucking hour is really hot the day we went, so I would not have wanted to fucking sit. I was wearing jeans as well. Fucking Jesus we're, Christ. <laughs> so we're going to get you wearing like shorts and that next time. You're going to invite her to a picnic now. If we, is it Bir- Birmingham? Is well, it, what? Like what? Birmingham? <laughs> what? Let me set up you, set you up for a date. <clears throat> Wednesday. Oh, what do you want about that? Okay, you're going to send her a message saying, I'd like to see you again. Are you excited? For, would you be excited for a picnic on this Wednesday at that spot? We're going to get Y and then we'll get X. That's tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's kind of... I mean, you can do it anyway. No, no. I'm just, I'm just, like no. Is that tomorrow, man? All the other days are... are um, raining. I mean, you could do it anyway, but... <laughs> Tomorrow is uh, our picnic. A picnic, a picnic makes me really nervous, bro. Like I have to. <clears throat> how how's that? How's that gonna? Work? I have to like bring the shit, or like I I'll buy it there. It, or... I'll walk you through it. You can buy my coach in, and I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 Wait, waffles is like I'm gonna be. <laughs> it's fucking selling shit. It's <laughs> 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 in a relationship. Somebody can just send a bunch of picnics on cover. <laughs> <laughs> the graph shows picnics do not work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bro, send her the message. So meet it tomorrow at like day. No, five. not tomorrow. Yeah. Dude, I need I need time to gear up for this shit. Send I'm not like you, I'm not a unit. No, no, send, bro, send her the message. We'll prepare you for it. It's likely that she might say no anyway. No, I so. can't go tomorrow, Hams, or I fucking can't. There's not a chance. You can do There's it. like a zero percent chance, dude. I I seriously need like I need a few days to gear up for shit like this. <laughs> I'd say send her a message for tomorrow, man. I know it's it's soon for you, but after the message is sent, she either says yes or no. And if she says yes, the thing is, even if you feel like you need to prepare, you're not gonna feel 100 percent ready anyway. And so we can just get you meeting her tomorrow for like a sick date. And then yeah, it's gonna make you feel anxious, but it's supposed to. Whereas if you just wait and wait and wait, it's like. You're just kind of missing out on the opportunity. When what if you you wait and she's like, "Oh, sorry, uh, Adonis just messaged me for a picnic, and I think I might just be with him now." <laughs> Send her the message, mate. The boys are counting on you, man. <laughs> I'm grateful for the the day we had or the drinks or whatever you want to say. I'm grateful for that. Would you like to join me for a picnic tomorrow at X PM? I'd say probably like 2 p.m. or something. Maybe even a bit later, actually. Yeah, I'm grateful grateful for meeting you last week. Was really No, 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 no. Take that off. I'm grateful for meeting you last week, comma. Well, what's wrong with what's really fun? Just, bro, come on. (laughs) I'm trying to help you. No, 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 tell me. This is a learning experience. What's wrong with saying it was really fun? Does that make me sound like a cuck? No, I don't don't overthink it that much. It's... Saying, hey, Laura, I'm grateful for it is like, that's a statement in itself. Otherwise, you just, in my mind, it's like, it's unnecessary to say it was really fun because okay. would you like to join me for a picnic tomorrow? Oh, fuck, dude. 
just send a message and that's all you have to do right now. I okay, anything else but a picnic, man. Seriously, that fucks me up. I what? really it shits me up. I don't know why, it just shits me up, man. I'm not gonna lie, bro. That that's <clears throat> obviously you're gonna drink on that as well. You're gonna bring like a little bottle of wine and I'll like I'll okay, I'm fucking I'm gonna do pre shots on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'll, I'll coach you through it, mate. I'll send you the shopping list and shit. You don't need to panic about that. You're holding up the podcast, bro. You're going to take action right now. Yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> Would you like to join me tomorrow for a picnic? Is that good? Mm-hmm. At, is that it? Uh, at the place and at the time as well. And I, I, put, I put a kiss at the end too. Is that okay? Or is that Come on. okay? Cool. Yeah, I'll do that. Good man, send that shit. All right, send. I'll kill myself. <laughs> oh god! Oh <laughs> fuck it all. Good uh... man. Well, there we go. You've you've essentially polarized her, and so now you know if she's interested in you. You're not just waiting around for no reason. If she says yes, she's interested in you. That's awesome. You're gonna have a sick time tomorrow, and obviously we'll prepare you for that. If she says no, then either she's not interested, fair enough, or if she says, oh sorry, you know something tomorrow, and she says, oh but how about Friday? Then okay, she's still probably interested. If she just blocks you right now then obviously we know she's not interested in it. <laughs> oh okay fuck it up that's um that's something that just happened i guess <laughs> i'll probably make a lot of cuts for that section because i feel like it's a lot of it's just us going around in circles because of my anxiety yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes of me is going oh, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> what do i need to what's on the shopping list like <laughs> <laughs> um, bro <laughs> <laughs> throwing up gang signs like a fucking redux. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to bring. <laughs> oh, God. All right, boys. We're back. We uh, we just had a little uh, water break there, and we were just sort of spagging out, just chatting a little bit too much shit. Uh, so we're going to try to get back on topic now. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask you then about the your experience in school because you briefly mentioned that before Mm. yeah so i felt like um when i was at school i felt very behind in a lot of senses um mainly like socially uh i might be like on the spectrum of autism i haven't been tested i don't really care to be tested to be honest um i think my mom wants me to be tested but I don't know. I just, I, just, I actually had a, a test like here to fill out and I, I just didn't do it for like eight months. It's probably still on my floor somewhere here. Just like, <laughs> just getting trampled on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I felt really behind socially and also like, because I was so, it's really hard to sort of gauge like reasons for things, but like, Whether it's because I was like, you know, addicted to games or like, um, I just didn't have the right people around me at the time. I just did not get along with many people. Like I, I had like one or two people I actually really liked. Um, but then everyone else, I, I was just, uh, The best way I could describe my school life was like um, being disassociated the entire time. And because of that, it sort of snowballs because you can't have a good time, be present for any of it Mm. if you're disassociated and you're not going to make friends, you're not going to make memories, you're just going to merely exist. And if you exist in a space like school, which is like a hostile space for me personally, you will be a target as well. So school wasn't fun for me. Uh, I don't like the education system. I think it's awful. I think it caters to some people perfectly fine, but then a lot of people just uh, not at all. Not at all, man. Um I hated every second I was at school. I hated every second. And uh, by the time I finished school, it was obviously like, oh, well, Sam, you got to do college now. You got to do college. That's that's the way of the world. You go to college now. It's like, okay, 
I didn't think about it, obviously, because I was just so off my fucking head on anxiety. I, anxiety is just my drug. I was off my head on anxiety, right? So I, I didn't, I didn't think about anything. I was just like, okay, I'm going with the motions. I'm going down the river to flow. You know, uh, went to college. Uh, about eight months in, I just had like a mental breakdown, complete mental breakdown. Um, Tell us about that. Ugh. All right. So it's fucking ridiculous. Like the catalyst for this happening is so ridiculously stupid. You can probably gauge how long and how grinded down I was at this point. That something so stupid bothered me to the point where I just had a mental breakdown. But one morning I was putting on my shoes for the college and they were failing new shoes and they didn't fit me correctly. They didn't fit me correctly. Like they were slightly rubbing and I just fucking burst out crying. Really, <clears throat> really sobbing. Um, and my mom was in the house and she I I can't I can't even remember much about this, but like my my I've been very blessed with my mom because she's um she's really looked out for me in a sense with the mental health stuff. Um, at some points it's been a bit too much though. Some points I I, I needed like some some space to sort of like just do things, but um you know you can't fall for that. Um, But yeah, I, I just didn't go to college ever again after that. I dropped out. I dropped out of college. And um, then I was just home all the time, which uh, was bad. I don't know what was worse, going to college full of, uh, you know, people who didn't really like me and uh, work I didn't want to do, I wasn't interested in. I mean, I took psychology and like, I find it interesting, but like, I would never do that. It's kind of like what you were saying in a video I was editing today, actually, you, you were talking about the education system and how it's fucking crazy that it's catered to 18 year olds, like university and stuff like that. I wouldn't have done college now. You're not ready to make these decisions at that age. Um, I just never went. And then I, I, was, I was just at home for, for years. Um, I don't know what the plan was, honestly. The, the plan was... I, I went to the doctors very often, uh, keep, keep an eye on me. I had, I had uh, counseling, therapy. I went on the antidepressants because uh, I, had, I had very, very down days. Um, like dangerously down days. So my mom uh, very urgently told me to go on them. I didn't, she didn't tell me, you know, but it felt like I was being told because I value her, her opinion very highly in, in this sense. And it, it, it went against every fiber of my being to go on to antidepressants because I, I really fucking, I hate taking stuff to, that alters your 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 brain activity which is, it sounds ridiculous because like you drink coffee that alters your brain activity but like you, i can't explain that it's kind of like a weird like thing for me like i i hate taking things um so to illustrate that point real quick like about a year ago i had an infected toe really bad infected toe it was like full of like blood and pus it was horrible i had two options i could take antibiotics or they could slice into my toe with with no numbing or whatever and squeeze that shit out. Guess which one I chose? I chose the second because I don't like taking shit. I really don't. So going on antidepressants for me was fucking huge and I, I cried about it a lot. But they did actually do their job in the sense of um, 
leveling out the days. It was it was more like this, you know, and it was less like fucking. <laughs> so I didn't have um, really any of those days since I went on the antidepressants. But my god, do they solve? They they do solve numb you out, man. Like you you, you can't feel the highest of highs or the lowest of lows. So it has its downsides. Antidepressant should be used as a tool to um, get your shit together. They should never be relied on. You should you should take antidepressants, and uh, in that time period, you're on them while you're stable. Improve aspects of your life so you can get off them as soon as possible. Kind of went off topic here. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I think I think that was that was my time in school and stuff. Like I I just disassociation hundred percent all the time. Just not present for any of it. Mm. It sucked. I hated everything about it. What led up to the moment when you were you burst out crying up to, uh, with your shoes? Like something must have like been building up a reason why you know you you weren't happy. You were frustrated. You didn't like school. What was it? It was like bullying. There was no switch. There was no like specific thing. It really was just a very, very, very slow and eventual grinding down. Like imagine, <clears throat> imagine this started, I'd say this sort of grinding down started at like when I was 14, right? So imagine you've got a uh, piece of wall, right? And you've got a piece of sandpaper. You're going like that on it for fucking years, right? That's that's how it felt for me. And the day where I, I just burst out crying, that was reaching the other side of the wall after sanding it down after after like, you know, seven years or whatever. It was horrendous. Horrendous. That was a very good analogy. Yeah. Slow and painful, man. Sucked. And what do you think was the the sandpaper? Um, I think a main one's people. Um, the, the attitude that friend groups have at school, um, they have this weird hierarchy of like people, um, based on their, their value to the group, which is like not abnormal. Right. That's kind of like how it is but the difference between a good friend group and a bad friend group is the people higher to the top don't use that power they have to actually step on the others beneath them they actually should be using it to raise them to their level i for my entire life up until recently have only had the stepping stone friends who use me as a stepping stone for a cheap laugh to gain status within the group, etc. I've never been able to assert myself in the banterous sense that is required to sort of get on with these like really childish friend groups. I've never had that. And I never have the energy for it either. I still don't. I don't have energy for such like stupidness. Um, I think that's a really big factor. My entire life, I've only had those friends. Um, I think also the atmosphere I was in as well. I had a pretty, I'm not going to go into my home life, but it wasn't, it was not ideal. Um, The school I was going to was not good. It was a, it was a crap school. <laughs> they actually shut down like, and a year after I left, they shut down. Uh, <laughs> Do you have a pedophile teacher? Ah, oh, well, everyone has a teacher. Don't they? <laughs> it's the pedo Davies. <laughs> there's a there's a joke that one of my friends made, which pisses me off every time about my school. He was like, oh, you, "You've got to fight the headmaster to get in." <laughs> 
that that sort of goes to show how you know she's <sighs> yeah I, I, it's really fucking difficult for me to sort of break this down because like i say i literally was not present for any of my school life so like i can't even notice these things which were bothering me it just went fucking ignored it wasn't ignored subconsciously but for me to now try and break down what happened is near enough impossible what were you doing when you weren't present? That's also really difficult. Um, I was most likely thinking about my uh, Minecraft save. And uh, absolutely nothing important, man. Mm. Nothing important. Nothing important at all. Anything that would take me away from the situation I was in. Here's why mindfulness needs to be taught in schools because we, like our age, there was particular people who were mindless because we had heavy internet consumption compared to everyone else. So, you know, by the time we were in college, of course, you know, all the girls are on social media and that, but me and you, for example, and guys who are similar to us, probably most guys watching this, we were also the people who were on our PCs or Xboxes multiple hours every single day since we were like seven, eight years old. Whereas a, a bunch of the people who are our age didn't actually do that. Mostly like the popular people, they were going outside and like doing other stuff. They were, you know, they, they, they weren't invested in the Minecraft save or the RuneScape account. And so we were the ones who were mindless through school, especially if you had like levels of anxiety or anything anyway. And so you, you can actually relate then is you actually like, you probably wanted to get good grades. You probably wanted to learn. You just couldn't, like you literally could not pay attention to the teacher for more than a couple of seconds. And it, and the education system makes you a bad person for that. It makes you feel like that's your fault. Like you've got, like everyone's got the same level of, of like mental capability of, of mindfulness. And it's just that we were voluntarily choosing not to pay attention to the teacher. We weren't like, we didn't, honestly, we didn't even get a choice. I actually was so zonked out that I had absolutely no aspirations at all. So I literally did not even give a shit about my grades. I got, I got C's across the board. Mm. I, I just did the bare minimal, you know, I actually found science, science, sucked. my science sucked. My, oh man, science sucked. My, my science class was a joke. So I found science, but um, I was so fucking disassociated and I, I had no aspirations outside of my Xbox <laughs> that I cared about. Not even my grades. Which is fucking shocking, isn't it? Mm. I was taught the same as everyone else that grades are important. But I was that disassociated that it just it's just like whatever man you need space when you go the minecraft castle that you've been building exactly i had a sick castle i had a, a cobblestone. cobblestone generator <laughs> i already know a fortune three pickaxe that's all i'm thinking of <laughs> so there's a guy watching this right now I say he's 18 years old. He's experienced pretty similar stuff to you. And he's heavy into the video game culture, but he does want to quit. What do you say to him? Firstly, good fucking job for getting to where you are now. Because, um, I mean, I've only just started thinking about this shit at like uh, 22 or whatever. So if you're if you're 18, <laughs> this hypothetical person is 18. Good fucking job for being so mindful um, and self-reflective of yourself to actually be at this point. That's amazing. You're already off to a fucking crack and start, buddy. Um, 
what I would say is um, fill your time with other shit, man. Try and fill your time with a shit. Uh, start a little side hustle. Go to the gym. I mean, if you play if you play video games like I was, you have a stupid amount of free time. So there's no excuse. Go to the fucking gym. Start building um, whatever whatever body you want. You know, a lot of people they might look at, um, you know. A bodybuilder and be like yeah i want to be like that but you know going you don't need to look like that just going to the gym in general even if you um don't reach your rpe of like nine or whatever just going there and working out and being around other people is uh it's shockingly good for your mental health um so make that first step i didn't do that for a long time I actually started doing home workouts because, uh, you know, anxiety and all that. <laughs> um, side hustle, work on your body and uh, take up something creative. Take up something creative which will fill your mind um with that instead of whatever the fuck your game is for example you can write a book you can do a short film you can just do uh youtube videos script writing stuff like that you'll be thinking about that stuff more often than you'll be thinking about um your your fucking card rank or whatever it is you know people aren't really playing card nowadays but <laughs> your valorant rank <laughs> um i mean it's pretty early days for me still to be giving this advice but um i think i think those three you just simply cannot go fucking wrong mm. there's just net gains no matter what even if it doesn't really work for getting you off video games it's still like pushing you in the right direction mm. But like video games hooks go real deep, you know, that it's ridiculous. I think I reached a point with it where I knew I wasn't enjoying anything. I was that like zonked out on the dopamine that I find it hard now to find anything enjoyable. And what a fucking shame that is, you know. Uh, I think a fat dopamine detox would do wonders for me, but I, I don't think I, uh, I don't really think I have the strength for that. I reckon you do. I reckon that would be one of the best things you ever did. And I don't think, I don't think you'd ever go back. I think if there was a guy who was going to take dopamine detox as serious as I have and completely revamp their life because of it, I think it would be you because you have everything to gain and essentially nothing to lose with your old behaviors. And I think that when you see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and you see like the drastic change that I personally did to get away from the instant gratification activities and you did it for like two weeks, three weeks, you know, you just fully said, okay, this is going to be your life. You're just not going to use the internet much now. You're not going to do any of those, those shitty habits your creativity, your production, everything's going to skyrocket and, and then you're going to start to get the dopamine from your work. And so I don't think you'd ever go back. I think that's potentially something that we will get you to do. I would need a hard fucking accountability partner for that though because it's mm, so I wonder, fucking... I wonder if we could find someone who's who could um <laughs> someone who might have some experience i need you to message me every 30 seconds like hey sam are you not playing uh you're not playing half stone are you buddy you're not playing half stone i've i've slipped into that habit over the past week actually i've started to play half stone again fucking waste of time Is that the card game on the pc yeah, um. yeah. absolute <laughs> thing, waste man, of time there's your advice to yourself and it's 
you need to fill up your time with something else. You do that stuff because you've got time for it and because you don't have something that's like incredibly important. Like you do, but your your drive for the important stuff is getting sapped because of these games. And so what we need is to put your drive into like two, three, four different ventures right now that you take your own advice. You've got your main business, you're freelancing, and then you also do another side hustle. And then you also do some like musical instrument or something. You just I, I have shit to do. I, I know for a fact I have shit to do. I think once we change the videos, I think you're going to get a lot more, not just busy, but I think you'll actually want to edit more. Yeah, 100%. Uh, quick little spoiler leak. <laughs> Don't speak about your plans, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll see that video before this podcast, actually, so that works out. <laughs> I'd say the same thing. Twice the, <laughs> the guys watching this, I'd say very similar, and I'd just say use what you've learned from the games in real life and just level up in real life. The amount of time that you spent leveling up your characters in real life, just give yourself that that treat right now how the mindset that you have on how to level up in real life and and how to level up in in video games exactly what to do to grind in video games is exactly how real life works and the moment you start after a couple of weeks i know it's uncomfortable for the first few weeks but generally you've probably wondered why some people just get so consistent in the good habits whereas you you know this 18 year old you've tried to like exercise or meditate you've tried to do some of the good things but you just haven't continued. That's because you've been waiting for motivation. You've been waiting until you feel like doing that thing. And so you went to the gym when you felt like it that one day when you watched the fitness video and you meditated after you felt like it after you watched one of my videos. Your progress comes when you just start doing the things without feeling like it. And specifically also when you don't do things that you feel like, because that's the trap of the modern world is that you're always going to feel like doing the bad habits and you're almost never going to feel like doing the good habits up until you hit this like point of no return. And then it's like, you get like 10 times more motivation because you can already see the results because motivation comes from results. So I'm motivated to go to the gym because I've already got the body, but that's fucked up in it. It's like, you're not motivated to go to the gym until you get the body. And so for the overlapping first period of time, whether it's weeks, months or years, you have to go even when you don't feel like it and just view it as like a skill in a video game where you go in, you're a low level right now. You're going to get experience every single time you go, you're just leveling up. So Sam, one more question for you. One final question is future Sam is watching this in 2022 and one year from now. What's the message you want to say to him? But I hope you've got your dick sucked already, man. <laughs> Honestly, this is becoming a bit fucking ridiculous, man. <laughs> um, let me think, Jesus. Um, I really fucking hope. I I I really wish to have like a, a actual fucking routine. If you okay, twenty twenty two, Sam. If you have a routine, you're a fucking baller, man. Especially a fucking night routine, like a sleeping routine. Holy fuck, man. Uh, I I suck with my sleep. So, I feel like just... Oh, man, I watched that video that you sent me, Hamza. The routine for productivity, the one you sent me yesterday. He wakes up at 7. He, he has breakfast and he goes for a walk. That would be so fucking sick, man. That would be wonderful and then he goes straight into his creative work man that would be fucking sick 2022 sam if you're not already doing it get on it motherfucker uh i mean i guess i could just do it now mm, i was gonna say what's stopping you from doing that <laughs> <laughs> what's stopping me from doing anything hamza you know autism yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's good that's a good answer because now we know what we're going to focus on when we're, we're talking about your improvement is get the routine in. and i have a question hamza i'm yeah. sorry you said that was the last thing but if you do you do you think my mindset my old mindset not necessarily now because like i'm so fucked up on games but like 
if I went on a dopamine detox, do you think my grinding nature that I had for games would sort of reoccur, but for things which actually fucking mad? Yeah, it always does. That would be fucking ridiculous. I would turn into a superhuman. Well, have you seen me? <laughs> when, when you're mm. a video gamer, we've been leveling up before everyone else. Like the normal people are good at real life, but we've been good at something that emulates real life since we were like eight years old. Like we learned how to make money in these games. We learned how to fucking scam kids when we were like nine years old. I learned how to like betray a motherfucker, like how to make influence and persuasion and leadership, how to bring someone into the wilderness and, and backstab them. And like, I've been through that shit, bro. I learned how to do this. You've learned like the, the combat. I used to do, I used stuff, to do right? CSGO trading with knives. You I learned traded, about fl like flipping and everything, and, and with card. You I traded like, from a AK skin, which was worth fifteen pounds. I shit you not. I traded from that to a M9 bayonet ruby, which cost one thousand five hundred pounds in okay. about eight months. Nice work. And that shit's hard, man. You got to convince people that this piece of shit you've got is way cooler than the way cooler thing they have. <laughs> <laughs> and in that time as well, I actually got, I got fucking scammed twice because I, I lost a... Okay, let's just say I lost about 500 pounds from, from being a retard <laughs> as well. Which hurt. That hurt, but yeah. But yeah, to answer your question, 100%, man. I found that video gamers are the best, like it's common sense in it. Video games are the, are the best grinders and you understand what it takes to grind. You understand like the mechanics of it and the the way that it works in the game. Real life is exactly like that, honestly. It's like the same template. It's just, it's a bigger reward, but also a bigger discomfort. And the moment you, you begin to tap into a certain mindset where you, you strive for discomfort, you turn into that tank for you. You're unstoppable. You've been leveling up since you were like seven years old. And it just needs a bit of an overlap into your real life. And the moment that it does, and the moment you start making experience in real life and leveling up in real life, that's your game now. And you can probably tell why I'm like so committed to this because it's literally just fun for me. It's like I'm playing video games all day without the negatives of it. This time it's literally, I'm just leveling up. I'm just profiting and I'm not turning into a retard because of it. I have more shit to say, but let's end it here, man, because it's, it's a fucking long podcast. Yeah, I know. Sweet. I can always get on another time as well. Yeah, we'll have you on more consistently, man. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, it's fun. Sweet, boys. I mean, you still got your YouTube channel, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, you guys can sub to my YouTube. It's, it's full of retarded content um i i i think i'm i'll i'll put some more stuff out i actually want to make i want to make a video about something i've learned over this past weekend which i've told mm -hmm. Hamza about which i'm not going to talk about but um <laughs> it's kind of it's a weird one i can't really talk about it because of reasons <laughs> i it's i don't know i have to sort of figure that one out but i'm going to be putting out um some stuff Maybe so, you know. Maybe you'll find some value in it. I'm, I'm thinking of sort of stuff which isn't Spurg gaming content, and it has some other sort of value to it. But you might see sometimes, you know, like me watching a film and like reacting to it and laughing with my friends. You know, you know, whatever the fuck I feel like putting out, I'll, I'll put it up. Uh, but yeah. See. We'll have Sam's channel linked in the description. This is a cult video editor, so all of the power just goes to him. And what a sick guy, man. Can we get a nice podcast, Sammy, in the comments so we know who's watched the entire thing? <laughs> and we'll reward you for that somehow. <laughs> yeah, you'll get a free blowjob voucher. <laughs> Sweet. Thank nice one, man. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Take care, boys.